question we're raising tonight, Modi heads to America in September. Is Prime Minister Modi rebranding India's foreign policy? Now, a short while back, I caught up with the former union minister, senior Congress leader, Dr. Shashi Tharoor. And I began by asking him whether the Congress was not beginning to feel that they had let off the possibility of going in for the low-hanging fruit when they themselves were in power. Because for the longest time, when this issue of denial of visa to Gujarat's Chief Minister Narendra Modi came up, it was almost as if the Congress was feeling only too happy to let Mr. Modi be embarrassed by an external agency. No, but in fact, the UPA government at that point didn't take a position on the matter because Mr. Modi was applying for a personal trip. Uh, and as, as you know, the U.S. Uh, had actually taken the position that on a personal trip they were not going to give him a visa. Had he wanted to go as part of an official delegation or gone in his official capacity, I'm sure the government would have extended all assistance to him. But the question never arose in that form. Today, what has happened with the invitation, of course, is something that we perfectly uh, support. I mean, as an Indian, I would not want anyone, any foreign country, to insult my prime minister. So the question of a visa doesn't arise, and the issue is a totally different one today. I don't think it's fair to hang that on the UPA government's head. No, but you see, Dr. Tharoor, you say it's not, it's not fair to blame the UPA for that, but the truth is that there are many who thought that you were not batting for him. You were not, for instance, say when, when the entire controversy break, broke out about whether he could be doing a video link to Wharton or not, what was the response of the UPA? The UPA was simply playing a silent role, sir. Well, uh, let me ask uh, you to recall that as far as I myself am concerned, I spoke up against the, uh, the one decision that occurred when I was around, which was this uh, Wharton students disinviting Mr. Modi's video conference with him. And I said that was wrong and uh, ungracious. Even though I had been crossing swords with Mr. Modi on other issues, I felt that was a wrong thing to do. But I was not in an official position to do anything else about it. As far as the, the UPA government is concerned, as I said, I don't think the UPA government interferes in the foreign travel of any Indian dignitary if it's a personal trip. When the trip was or was intended to be for official purposes, the Chief Minister would come through the Government of India and of course the Government of India would have helped. I, I can't imagine a situation where, uh, let us say, an opposition Chief Minister coming to the UPA Government, to the MEA and saying, will you facilitate my visa to country X or Y, doesn't get the full assistance that we would give. That's normal. But a personal trip is a different matter, and that was all, as far as we are aware, that Mr. Modi was, was seeking to do at that time. But Dr. Arur, I must ask you this question. You know, as someone who's been a former union minister, a former diplomat, do, how do you look at this surprise element, which Mr. Modi seems to be championing, as far as his foreign policy initiatives are concerned? Look at what he did on the date, for instance, of his swearing in. He suddenly went out, took everyone off guard, invited the Sri Lankan president, ignored the kind of concerns which were being expressed by the Tamil Nadu chief minister, went ahead, invited the Pakistani prime minister, ignored the kind of reservation which had earlier been expressed by sections of his own party. Do you believe this surprise element? which is coming from Mr. Modi, is going to be his biggest USP? Even if you were to look at, say, for instance, this whole Indo-American initiative now, which seems to be mushrooming under Mr. Modi's leadership. Well, look, first on the broader question, I think that Mr. Modi's uh, overwhelming majority, with the BJP getting a majority on its own, certainly liberates him from both his party's previous positions and from uh, being hostage to allies, whether within the NDA or amongst the state governments. Uh, that certainly gives him the freedom to do the kinds of things he did, inviting people despite the objections of certain state chief ministers and other state political parties allied to him. And that is something that we should recognize as a significant change. We have not been in India in a position to do that since 1989. So that's been a very important uh, development. But Secondly, as far as the surprise element is concerned, surprise in and of itself is a very short-lasting benefit. Surprise gives you a good headline. It may add to the intensity of feeling good about a particular initiative. But it has to be followed by the nuts and bolts of hard work, of diplomacy, of following through. Dr. Tharoor, it's, it's interesting, you know, that, that you've been talking about Mr. Modi in, in a manner which suggests that you are almost changing your position. I mean, may I quote to you, for instance, uh, what you've said in Huffington Post, where you are gone to the extent of uh, describing Narendra Modi as an avatar of progress and development. What's happening, Dr. Tharoor? I think the problem with... Uh our media is it tends to misrepresent what it reads very hastily or doesn't read at all. Maybe it's reading paraphrases of my article. What I said was that Mr. Modi is trying to rebrand himself and remake himself 
from a hate figure into an avatar of modernity and, and progress. And obviously that is not my judgment, but my judgment of what Mr. Modi is trying to do. And I believe we've seen evidence of that because from the 16th of May onwards, we've heard nothing but positive, accommodative, inclusive language of reconciliation. And we have not heard Hindutva being mentioned. We've not heard divisive rhetoric. We have seen a man who says he's there to work for the welfare of all Indians. And my position very simply as an individual Congress MP on the opposition benches is that it would be churlish not to acknowledge this. And finally, finally, Dr. Tharoor, are you a little worried that the BJP, which has support of 282 Lok Sabha MPs, majority government on its own, are you worried that the BJP may actually not be interested in building the kind of, say, national broad-based consensus, uh, which, which used to be the hallmark, in a sense, and many thought was a hurdle with, with Manmohan Singh as well, that he had to reach out to different political parties before undertaking any foreign policy initiative, whether it was with Pakistan or it was anywhere else. Are you worried that the BJP may actually not just be bothered about what your position is, sir? Well, even in the days when the Congress had an even larger majority than the BJP has today, we took the position that political differences stop at the water's edge, stop at the borders, uh, that we uh, do not have a party foreign policy, we have a, an Indian foreign policy. Which is why, for example, at the height of Mr. Vajpayee's opposition to the government, he was always invited to be part of the delegation to the UN General Assembly. That is the spirit in which we have conducted ourselves when we were in government, and we would expect the BJP to bear that in mind as well, that political differences should not come in the way of the way in which India presents itself to the outside world. Mr. Narendra Modi as our Prime Minister is the custodian of that standing that India has in the world. And that is a very major responsibility. If he conducts himself as that responsibility implies, it means definitely taking into account popular sentiment. If he were to go massively against, against what we believe is the right thing, I assure you the Congress will oppose, and it's not just the 44 of us in Parliament. We, the Congress party, is the party that is pres present in every village, every street, every home in this country, and our, our struggle will be a national struggle if we feel national interests are being betrayed. All right, Dr. Shahid Tharoor, thank you so much for taking all those questions and giving us a clear picture as far as where is the Congress party which stands as far as Narendra Modi's initiative is concerned. Let me also welcome our two guests at this stage, Neelam Deo, former diplomat, joining us from Mumbai, and Praveen Swami, strategic affairs of the Hindu. Praveen, let me begin with you. What do you make out of uh, this sudden development? Narendra Modi now having a bilateral meeting with Barack Obama, ending this nine-year chill, being denied visa. Can we really expect something substantive coming out of these talks between the two, Praveen? But those are two different questions. And the first is, I don't think there's anything surprising about the fact that uh, he would wish to have this meeting. Whatever his personal feelings uh, about visa denial might be, uh, he is now the Prime Minister of India, and that involves uh, dealing with heads of government and heads of state in other countries, uh, irrespective of how he might personally feel about their dealings with him in the past. Uh, on the second, I, you know, I, I, I think we should wait till we know more about exactly what the stuff of Mr. Modi's foreign policy is going to be, uh, as distinct from the atmospherics. Uh, there's the nuclear deal, which has, uh, which, which got bogged down over questions of nuclear supplier liability. We're not going to see something dramatic happen till those very complex issues are resolved. Uh, the U.S. has expectations on intellectual property, uh, which will run into resistance from various lobbies in India. Uh, we, in turn, want greater numbers of visas, which will again face resistance from some elements uh, in the United States. Um, so, yes, it's important that this process of diplomacy is taking place. Uh, but, you know, the stuff of diplomacy isn't about theatre and atmospherics and what plays out on uh, TV screens or newspaper headlines. Uh, there's going to be a lot of hard work and it'll be, uh, I, I think we should watch very carefully uh, as that goes ahead without uh, any undue euphoria. Okay, so we should not be unduly euphoric. But Neelamji, would you, would you say, you know, the surprise element that I was asking Dr. Tharoor about, Mr. Modi seems to be making a habit of this, almost converting it into an art, where he takes everyone off guard. Do you believe that this surprise element tactic, this strategy, can work while dealing with the Americans? You know, I think there uh, seems to be a method here. Uh, he's certainly moving rapidly. The speed with which decisions are being taken uh, give the signal that this is a decisive person uh, and uh, that he is his own man in scripting his 
outreach to other countries. So, the having all the SARC uh, heads of government at the swearing-in ceremony, and uh, now announcing the the bilateral visit uh, to Washington D.C. You should also recall that uh, he will be going to Brazil, where he will meet the Russian and the Chinese uh, heads of government. Already the Chinese uh, foreign minister will be arriving here tomorrow. Uh, it's expected that he will make an early visit to Japan. There are also some stories uh, going around that he may stop in Germany on the way to Brazil. Uh, I would say that it is clear that he is reaching out quickly in the first couple of months of his uh, prime ministership to all the major important countries and that uh, was not expected because there was all this anticipation that his early focus would be only on domestic economic issues. But clearly he is combining the two things and engaging in uh, what you might want to refer to as economic diplomacy. Okay, you know, and that economic diplomacy is what I wanted to put to you, Praveen, because Mr. Modi has often spoken about how he believes that economic affairs is going to be the basis of his foreign policy. Now, you know, a lot has, a lot has changed as far as Indo-US relations are concerned. Uh, we've seen what has happened, say, for instance, in the Devani Khubargade episode. Uh, it led to embarrassment all around. There are questions being raised about, say, the civil nuclear liability clauses, which ultimately had to be changed. Do you really believe that this, this meeting, is it just going to be a, a breaking of, a meeting mi of minds of sorts, just a breaking of fights between the two leaders, or can we expect some, something more dramatic, another surprise element coming out of this meeting? Well, you know, issues like nu nuclear supply liability are not going to be resolved at one meeting between these two heads. Uh, I, I think Neelam Deo is perfectly right that Mr. Modi is signaling that he's dynamic, that he intends to get business done. Uh, it's certainly true that he understands that uh, the great growth India experienced during UPA 1 came at a time when uh, the world climate was very, very conducive, when the world itself, uh, the world economy was doing very well and that today circumstances are different. The global economy is in a mess and India is going to have to work much harder on the global stage uh, to benefit and to leverage what opportunities they are. Right. Uh, having said that, again, I think uh, I, I just voice uh, the need to be a little restrained. Every single Indian foreign uh, prime minister in recent years, uh, the last decade, has been you know, hailed as a genius for their bold, dramatic outreach. You had this kind of language with uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh in his early years. You had it with Prime Minister Vajpayee. And of course, the reality of building these relationships and grabbing these, you know, shaping these outcomes is much, much more muddy and complicated. Uh, policy isn't made by two people giving right. each other warm handshakes and giving each other a, a hug. The issues are complicated, and I, I think Mr. Modi is going to work very hard to, to shape a coherent foreign policy. Right. Uh, but it's going to take time. It's not something that's going to happen at the first photo opportunity. But I think that both all, all the three of us are in broad agreement that Mr. Modi certainly is making all the right noises as far as sending the signals are concerned. Mr. Modi certainly seems to be sending the right signals. But thank you so much for joining me on this edition of India at 9. End September is the time when Mr. Modi would be traveling to America where he'll be holding that, that bilateral meeting with uh, the American president. Let's see what comes out of that meeting in the month of September. Lots to talk about, lots to look forward to. And that's why we're saying that we've been tracking the Modi government and every move which has been made by Mr. Modi in these last...